Las Meninas. Time, 1656. Setting, Velasquez's studio in the Madrid Palace of the Spanish King Philip. Of note is a special chair upstage center reserved solely for the king's use. The rest of the studio has the typical supplies and equipment of any studio belonging to a painter who enjoyed a powerful and wealthy patron. We can see numerous paintings from the royal collection, most notably the Arnolfini portrait by Jan van Eyck. Soon after 1558, the Spanish royal collection took possession of the painting, and it seems likely that Velasquez studied the work. All are present at Lights Up. King Philip sits in his special chair with a packet of documents. You propose an interesting and innovative concept, Velasquez. Fascinating. Most intriguing. My answer is no. Your Majesty, I beg you the kind indulgence of reconsidering. Never mind. I have a mock serious quarrel with you, painter. Uh, Senor Velasquez, who has been sitting in my chair? Your chair? Pause. <clears throat> One of my models for a sketch. You let a mere model sit in King Philip's chair? Be calm, boy. Perhaps the painter placed one of my fools in this chair. It would be appropriate should the model have been El Primo, a great fool in the greater fool's chair. King Philip smiles. The others dare not. Spain continues to decline from wealth to poverty. But we have our dramatists, we have our artists, and Philip has Velazquez. His majesty forgives his craftsmen, but no one else sits here. I feel most grateful for your forgiveness. Long pause. Sir? Why did I grow old and my son die young? Velasquez and Guardsmen look at each other. Balthazar could have been a great king. Pause. We are so old, painter. Pause. Why do the wrong men grow old? Your Majesty, I am six years older. Am I such a wrong man? You are a truly exceptional, painter, but if you had been one of my flat, flattering courtiers, you would indeed be a wrong man. Your Majesty, may I distract you from your burden? My painting will prove one of the finest demonstrations of the greatness of the Spanish mind. The greatness of the Spanish mind is a contradiction in terms. The technical questions of my intended painting have never been answered until now, Your Majesty. Our own walls give the lie to your own words. Look, the Van Eyck portrait of Arnolfini with his wife, dated 1434 over 200 years ago. Every problem you have described to me was solved by a mere Belgian. My proposed painting goes far beyond Belgium, Your Majesty. I dare say that if I accomplish what I hope to achieve, La Familia will stand as the exemplar of the era that history shall praise as a golden age of Spanish culture. Would I were as impressed with my country as you are. Sometimes I wonder if Spain was better off under the infidels. You have been a great king. No, oh, please. You have been a great king to me. Ah, now the craftsman's patron hears the truth. If I may, your majesty. You are a great king to the peasant's son. You selected me as your personal guard, your last defendant. Must I disregard the honor you have shown me, sir? You know, this peasant's son sometimes speaks as wisely and as well as the most learned theologian. La Familia would show the simple pleasures of your majesty and his queen, the pleasures of your family. I like your paintings of my fools and dwarves. I would rather you painted more of them. Your Christian charity towards them embarrasses Spain's priests. I never felt happier with your craftsmanship than the night you unveiled your painting of El Primo, and after only a glance, he wept. <laughs> Velasquez paints me as if I were human. Bill. El Primo is human. I know that, thanks to you. <laughs> I've never seen that dwarf weep before or since. Tears of joy, Your Majesty. I can create tears of joy again. King Philip looks at a message. Oh, bother. Velasquez, grant me one favor. Prove your superior intelligence by never becoming a king. This could be good news, Your Majesty. Do I appear to hold good news? <clears throat> well, it's nothing, really. Just another famine. Not my village, Your Majesty. 
Not this time. Pass. I almost believe we are not good enough for this throne. Do not speak. Your protestations console me not. Pass. You could see it as early as age eight. Baltazar had the gift. Extremely long pause. So what shall we discuss? Let's discuss La Familia, Your Majesty. Oh, painter, you are a caution. Fine. Very well. Your king craves a little intellectual stimulation. Your Majesty's indulgence is yet again appreciated. I want to use an enormous canvas, almost as tall as two men. Majesty, it is a great canvas for such a great subject. And tis a poor flatterer for such poor flattering. Leave flattery to the noble donkeys who bray in my ear. Continue, craftsman. Consider the Van Eyck. At whom do the Arnolfinas look? Why, the painter, of course, as he painted them. Correct again, Your Majesty. However, the curved mirror on the wall shows two people who are not part of the scene, not the painter himself. My painting shall use reflection to show you and your world and the pleasures afforded to Your Majesty. I have no pleasures. Not even your daughter? Hmm. Your mastiff? Your dwarves and fools? I shall place your dog and two of your favorites, Mara Barbola and Pertusato, in the foreground. The center of the picture shall be taken by Lenfentanta. My daughter? Hmm. Hmm. Listen, guard. She has the flaxen hair that so entrances my painter. You hmm. need to keep a close eye on him in my daughter's presence. <clears throat> Uh, it's only a jest. Uh, Please continue. Let Fanta shall be attended by two of her maninas, Doña Isabel and Doña Maria Augustina. Mm -hmm. I shall portray myself off to one side at work on the painting the viewers shall see already completed. Droll. Behind your daughter, I shall place her chaperone. Marcella de Olor deserves recognition for her devoted service. As you wish. In fact, Your Majesty, let's include him. What? This hardly necessary to paint on your guard. I know you have an eye for the chaperone. If you wish, I shall paint her leaning to you and whispering in your ear. Uh, no, thank you. I thought you liked her. Just a little? Perhaps a little. <laughs> then your king commands you to let our craftsmen play Cupid. If we agree to this, you have not quite convinced me, Velasquez. There is more to the painting. I shall paint Don Jose Nieto upon the steps, but the viewer will not know if he comes or goes. At the back wall, we shall see a mirror reflecting the two people who observed this scene, the two people I'm painting, and this is where La Familia will become brilliant. Mm. I shall paint a mirror reflection of your majesty and the queen. No anonymous people, but the pinnacle of Spanish royalty. Must I appear in the mirror? My wife is much prettier. Oh, please, Majesty, you must appear. I need your assistance to demonstrate how I have solved problems of perspective that have plagued painters for decades. The viewer does not remain a mere viewer. He becomes a part of the painting. He sees the painting, and he is the subject of the painting. For centuries to come, the world shall see the world through the eyes of a king. The world should not want to see the world through the eyes of this king. Painter, we gave you another chance to make your case, and you failed. Your painting shall not exist. Sir, you have not told me why not. <laughs> Look at me, painter. You're old. Old. Well, I tell you, old. Most men our age, they don't reach our age. Please. Indulge my vanity. It is one of the few pleasures remaining to me. Velasquez takes his time considering his response. <clears throat> no. You're wrong. I beg your pardon. You did not properly address his majesty. I address you as more than a king. I address you as a friend. I am your king. I have no friends. I have courtiers. I have ministers, I have sycophants, liars, conspirators, schemers, swindlers, backstabbers. Truly the flower of all Christendom resides at our court. It is a king's pleasure that we may choose any man for a friend. 
It is a king's burden that every man wants to be our friend. It is a king's curse that we will never have a friend. Senor Velasquez, we hope our generous familiarity has not caused you to forget your compulsion to obey the rules of etiquette in the Spanish court. Treat us with such familiarity again, Craspin, and you shall no longer enjoy my patronage nor your position in our court. Address us properly, painter. No. King Philip needs only the slightest gesture to freeze his guards in. You may command this, but my painting commands that, and I know what I must obey. Rather than obey your king and patron, you obey a painting that shall never exist? It's the artist in me, Your Majesty. He's not an artist. He's a painter, a mere craftsman. I can speak for myself. Craftsman, crave you our forgiveness. Pardon me, Majesty, but I do not. I pray you'll forgive my disinterest in your forgiveness. You have more messages, Majesty. Tend to your ephemera. You may keep your ducats. Stunned, King Philip reads the messages. His reaction indicates nothing but disasters. A new outbreak of cholera. A new defeat in the battle. Yet another famine. Still another failure. Yet another failure. Forever another failure. The men who lead nations into morasses cannot lead nations out of them, but that has not always been so. The one thing I do well consists of hiring great artists and craftsmen, yet now I dismiss my best. Incompetence and vanity and knowing you possess both, such a glorious combination. Extremely long pause. Is a little immortality really such a terrible thing? Painter! Your Majesty. Can you begin La Familia tomorrow, Diego, my friend? Velasquez stands downstage right. Guardsman midstage left. King Philip sits upstage center. Freeze. I am only a guardsman, the son of a peasant, but I am immortal. Yet no one knows my name. But what of it? Your knowledge of my name would not have been lengthened my life by even one breath. The century shall yield whole tomes devoted to the study of La Familia, my greatest painting. Yet none shall call it by its true name. All shall call it Las Maninas. Such is futility. And I shall live on through history, yet only in the reflected glory of a mere painter, as if the sun reflected light from the moon. As for myself, this is who I am. But it is not who I am. This is the painting of the king, yet not the king. And not even the king as I am, but a mirror's reflection. You must hold a mirror to the mirror in the painting to see me as myself, in a reflection of the reflection of faded royalty. And such a king. This king presided over the decline of Spain, from a colossus that stood astride the Atlantic to an anemic appendage on the southwest corner of Europe. Such is futility. Marcella de Uloa did not accept my offer of marriage. I was not well born enough for her. But I married a good and noble woman, a uh, Better woman than that noble woman, a good and noble woman who helped me through this life as I helped her through hers. Who bore enough children that enough of them lived long enough to bear enough children of their own. I lived until 50 in an age when most did not live to 40. I even lived long enough to touch my first grandchild. Eyes, voice, heart, and body failing all already failed. I lay blind upon my final bed when my daughter said with a voice that came from 1,000 leagues away, Papa, here's your grandson. Oh, I could feel someone place the infant by my side. A new life lay at my right and death lay at my left. And with my last breath, I thought of him. Him, the painter. With my last breath, I understood him. 
I understood life. I understood everything I could not tell anyone. Such is futility, yet not futility. The guardsman, the painter, and the king live today seeing and living before you as I see and live before us. We live with the same vanity and foolishness as you live today. Remember that, you living and be humble as you stare with your own pity upon living figures who stare with their pity upon you. All is still. A projection of the painting Las Meninas appears and it becomes clear that the men have placed themselves in the exact same locations as in the painting. Finito.